Elsa. Do you wanna build a snowman? That's it. <laughs> Welcome, friends. Lost Scarf here, and it's time to talk about the vlog. So last week was pretty heavy. This week, uh, things. Okay, so first off, all the channel stuff, normal things. Near still happening. Zelda still happening. Um, other LP, uh, Night in the Woods is still happening. Night in the Woods is uh, amazing. You go through some things in that. Oh my god, and the voice work I do on that, I am proud of that. Um, so that's what's happening. One shot, Beat Cop happened, uh, Domina happened. We have Signal from Tolva. I cannot wait, uh, to, I'm gonna record the footage for that and get that out to, at some point. It comes out on the 10th. Signal from Tolva is kinda cool. It's from the people who made, uh, Sir, You Are Being Hunted. It's an interesting concept for a game. I like it. Um... I like it. I definitely like it. It comes out on the 10th. I don't know how much the game is yet. Sometimes we get an advanced copy, you don't get the price. So, I'll just like, it's really good, and whatever price it is, hopefully it's the right price that feels for whoever. But, um, we're getting more things ahead of time. Uh, trying to get Dawn of War 3, have not had any luck with that yet. Trying to get Shyness, Shines, it's that, that game with the furry, uh, creatures. Trying to get that one. There's a lot of games I'm trying to get, and we'll see if we get them, but there's quite a few indie games that we're getting. And we'll see more one-shots coming out. Uh, collabs, uh, in an hour I'm going to do some collabs. I'm going to do a Forts collab, 5 Minutes of Hell, and Deformers collab, because there's an open beta for Deformers. I played Deformers last year at Comic-Con. It was alright, so I'm curious how they've done in a year. Uh, also, for Comic-Con, I'm going to be at Comic-Con. I'll be there every day. I'm only going to be in there inside Friday. I'm going to walk around the other days, because you only need one day to go inside the con. The only reason why you want to go every single day is if there's a giveaway every single day of something you want, like uh, the Final Fantasy shirts last year. But you can always, uh, there's so much stuff to go on outside of Comic-Con that it's still worthwhile to go there if you're in San Diego, if, or somewhere nearby to drive down. Um, Tad. So, Tad. So, check this out. Oh, first up, the winner of the Tad giveaway is Yeti, uh, so just get a hold of me in, like, Discord or in stream or something, because you're around a lot, so Yeti's the winner, randomly selected, landed on Yeti. And so Yeti gets a $15 giveaway on Steam. We'll figure out what game, then I'll gift it to them. Uh, so again, those who don't know, uh, with TAD, 10% of the money we make every month on TAD, that will go towards a giveaway for the viewers. Now, should we make another goal, though? Should we make a goal of trying to break 100 every month and having some sort of special video for it? And I'm saying, yeah, let's do that. And something suggested was a karaoke stream. Um, I would be doing voices, not just me singing. We can do that, uh, if we break the hundred. So it would be, like, in sometime in May, if we break the hundred for April, for Tad, in May, we could do a karaoke stream. And, um, it would be viewer requests. Obviously, I have to kind of know the song, at least. And it, whatever voices, except Fenrir, because Fenrir is too strong, too bad on the throat to do. But it, I can do a lot of voices, of course. So, that could be a fun thing to do, if that's what you guys want. Now, uh, what would be hilarious is, we, we're like, okay, karaoke stream at $100, $100, okay. And then what happens is you guys just stop doing Ted, because you guys don't want that. That would be fun, it's like, huh, maybe I should make it the other way around, where no karaoke stream, if we break on. <laughs> but we'll see as the time goes on. I thought it was funny. One more thing. So, there are ways to run phone apps on your computer. There's BlueStacks, which, for me, it crashed my computer, so I don't like BlueStacks. Then there's Knox app. Knox app actually works for me. And so, if I don't want to do it, if I can't do TAD on my phone, I can do TAD on my computer. So, for those of you who want to do TAD, but you don't really want to do it on your phone, you can do it on the computer with Knox. At least some of you can. And so, that is a way to help out if you don't like using your phone, but you can use your computer. So, you can just, like, have it in the background, just hitting the ads and everything. That is a way to do it. So check out Knox app. It seems safe to me. Like, don't do anything super important on the Knox app, but something like Tad should be safe to do as far as I can tell. Um, that is everything in general for the channel. If you're not sure what Tad is, Tad is a way to help out the channel uh, by just viewing ads instead of, uh, so you can donate your time instead of money if you don't have any money. There's a video, it'll be in the description, uh, explaining how Tad works and all that stuff. Now, um... There's going to be a theater at the end of this one. The theater will be on lights and costumes, and that's a very fun talk. As far as the topic goes, um, obviously, from uh, last week, I was not in the best place. 
And it still spilled over into this week a little bit. And so I was not in the best place still. It has been an emotional roller coaster for two weeks. It, is, it really has been. It's been very stressful. I've been down, I've been up, I've been down, I've been up. I'm up right now. I, so there's that. But um, life happens. Life happens to all of us. And there are points when you got to do something. And sometimes what you have to do is this. And just listen closely. And that is... Sometimes you have to breathe. Sometimes that's the only thing you can do. Sometimes you, there's so much happening. There's so much going on. Maybe your mind's going at mile a minute. There's just so much. You just, you're, you're getting crushed by whatever stress or something like that. Sometimes you just got to take a breath and take a break from whatever it is. Just step away and just try to just be out of it for a while. And, and try to normalize, get back to some sort of center. And then go right back into it. Uh, not right back into it, but ease back into it. Just whatever it is you're dealing with. Sometimes you've got to take a breath. And so that's the important thing to just say. Um, that helped out for me a little bit. Like, with all the things going on. Someone said, someone I was talking to was just saying, like, you got to breathe. Take a breath. Breathe. Take a break. Step back for a while and come back in. And that's what I did. And I did feel better. I definitely felt better. So... Just a bit of advice on that is sometimes things are just really stressful when you're in the middle of it, and sometimes you just need to take a breath. That's all I'm saying with that. Now, another topic, uh, real quick as well. These are real quick topics, not really anything major, but I've talked about it many times. I talk about trying to become something greater. I think we're all capable of greatness. We can all, we can always improve. We can always become something greater, something better, something stronger, smarter, faster, better, harder, fa What's that song again? Well, all those things. All those things again. We can always become more than we are. And I'll never not believe that. There's always potential to grow, but there's always potential to not necessarily stop growing, but I guess stagnate. Well, I guess stop growing is stagnate. Where we can, it's the whole thing about the cup being full and empty is just, um, it's important to recognize you can always learn. It's also important to recognize that maybe you are wrong in what you learn. Sometimes you learn poor techniques and poor habits. And so it's important to reevaluate what you know and what you're doing and to see if you can do it better. Not just finding better techniques for the future, but also seeing uh, better techniques you could be doing like right now, I guess. Like, I don't know, some sort of maybe a mannerism or some just some way that maybe you're doing things that could be done better, I suppose. And it's just recognizing and introspection and just seeing that, I guess. The, the main crux is just we can all be better and there are ways we can do it. And the thing I'm, I've been thinking about is stop, is stop wanting to be greater, just be greater. And that is, um, like just saying like, I guess for example, for us, what I'm saying, in a, hopefully in a couple of years we become this great, great thing. And... The way we could do it wrong is I say, like, we're going to be this great thing, we'll get there, and we'll just... And then I just think that, and I just do whatever the hell I do. Um, why I say that's wrong is, if I'm not actively trying to improve, then I'm not going to get there? No, that's the wrong way to put it. Because even if you... As long as you're doing something, you're always improving. You're just getting faster at it or this or that. But if you're actively trying to get better, not just doing a thing, but doing a thing with purpose, I believe that will get you there sooner. That's the better way to put it. Actively trying to become better will get you there sooner than just doing it, I guess. Um, because we always get better at something in whatever we do. We're always getting better. We're always improving. Usually, the more you do something, the faster you get at it. And the faster you get at it, the more efficient you could be at it. And when you're getting faster, you have the potential to have more quality to it and things like that. And so that's what I guess I'm saying is... Whatever you want to pursue, actively pursue it and just improve on it. That's why I've been doing all these voice work stuff. That's why I've been doing the Night in the Woods. That's why I did Night in the Woods. Night was like, it looked interesting. I'm like, well, I can do all these voices, all these different voices. FF9 is the same thing. Other FFs in the future or other RPGs where there's no voice work will be me doing all the voicing to help me get better. And I think I've gotten better. At least I think so. And so that is what that is. It's just actually trying to get better. The acting class has allowed me to have all these ideas on how we can get better at things. It's always about improving. It's all about growth. All about growth. And that's, that's what I'm doing. And whatever you want to do, whatever you want to get better at, you can get better at it. Just as long as you are actively going for it, I suppose. Like, there's plenty of people who say they're a thing, 
and they don't actually do anything towards it. They just, they're just all right at it. They're, it's just a thing they like to do, but they don't really do enough to really improve at it. Like, you could say writing. Someone could say they're a writer and they like writing, but they don't write every day. You gotta write at least, like, hopefully every day. Maybe every two days, you, but you gotta write. You like to sing, you gotta sing. You need, you like an instrument, you gotta play that instrument. You gotta get on it. At least that's what I think. I believe in all of us. I believe we are all capable of greatness. I believe we will all become great. We can do it. We can all do it. So there you go. That is me talking right here. The theater talk next. As always, I'm thankful for you guys and gals. I'm always thankful. I'm thankful for whatever you guys and gals watch. I'm thankful for all your smiles. I am thankful for everything. I'm thankful for those who do the TAD, Patreon. If you support it, I'm thankful for that. Even if you don't support, I'm thankful for you being around. I'm thankful that I'm able to entertain you. That is that is very important to me. Entertaining people is extremely important to me. I like making smiles. That is that is the most important thing. That's really what it is. And I just want us to get bigger and better so we can give more smiles. That is that is the end goal, is, is making thousands, millions happy. That is That is the end goal. More and more happy people, because we all have it rough on this planet. It, there, we all have those tough days, and I want us to be able to help people get through those tough days. That's, that's what's important to me. So thank you everyone for watching and everything. Thank you, Jinx, for all her hard work. Thank you everyone in the community who helps us out. Just thanks in general. So, uh, hope you enjoyed the theater talk. I had fun talking. Hope you had fun watching and listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks coming by, and see you next time. Welcome, friends. Last guy up here. It's, uh, theater day... 17 and 18, I think. Yeah, let's go with that. Didn't do the 17 one because there wasn't a lot, so I figured I'd just do it for this one because there was a midterm here, so it'd be like... Nyeh. So, lighting. I talk about lighting a lot. There's an interesting thing about lighting, and that is we did lighting the other day and then stage design this day. Not stage design, costumes. And so, the costume designer, the stage designer, and the lighting designer, they and the sound designer, they all got to work together. Uh, mostly the sound designer has their own thing, but when it comes to stage and costume and lighting, they need to work out because the colors of lights can affect things. It's amazing. What's interesting about light, and this is, this is the thing, this is the thing that I don't know if I mentioned last time. We only see three colors. We only see three colors. We see, we see blue, red, and green. Unless I messed that up. We see these three colors. Everything else is a blend of those created by the brain. That's mind-blowing. So, what happened on Tuesday is she showed us a bunch of lights and different colors and everything so we could see it. And what happened was, this is very cool, we had a, a white canvas called a Skrillex, or not Skrillex, it's called a, it's called a thing, which word I can't remember right now, it's just this white screen that, that you can use for stages with lights and everything. And she put up a red she put up, no, not right. She put up a magenta, a thick magenta color. And she had everyone stare at it. And we all stared at it for 30 seconds. And then she took away the magenta. And this is just a white screen, but it was actually green. It was green because what happens is when your brain sees colors, it tries to normalize it to white. That is interesting. So with magenta taking up all the blues and the reds, you have greens that you need to filter into there to try to make it towards white in your brain. So when you take away that, when you take away magenta, the red and the blues, and there's just a white screen, you have a bunch of green in front of you instead because your brain has been saturating green. That is so damn mind-blowing. I can't believe I forgot about that concept. That's why there's all those crazy eye things that you can do with people with that. That is so cool. And then we just learned about different things like gobos and lamps and color scrollers and barn doors and all these things just different apparatus for lighting it was very cool and um one that's very interesting is which i didn't even consider is there's these two kind of lights you got the pernell lights which they're like good a lot of spread of light and then you have the uh they're called lycos they're called something else as well and these ones have a stronger beam of light they're like 800 watt and what's cool is you can have this one stage light and then you have another stage light in that one that's even brighter, and they look like two different ones. It's so cool. But then she also talked about uh, costumes and everything. So, on a white canvas, white light thing with a guy in a green shirt, you see green. If you put a red light on him, his shirt becomes, uh, becomes black. 
So that is something you have to keep in mind with the light design person and the stage design and the costume design people is the colors of things because you got to make sure that none of the colors clash where you turn a green thing that's supposed to be symbolic green it turns into black when you don't want it to and that'll screw things up which was very interesting extremely interesting and then sound stuff is you know amplification of sound motivated sound environmental sound sound boards sound cues all that stuff um sound stuff is also important but our professor really loves lighting so she went over lighting a lot and there's costumes and this is fascinating uh, she had everyone dressed up in costumes, it was pretty cool. And costumes inform you about so many things. And here are the things that inform you. A costume can inform you of eight personal traits, seven general aspects of a play, and five elements of design. That these things can inform you about things. And the personal traits are, the clothing can tell you someone's occupation, their social status, their age, their gender, their culture, their personality, education, and their health. Now, gender, though, it doesn't mean man or woman, it means feminine and masculine. That's what it means. So, usually they'll do a scale from 1 to 10. 1 for feminine and 10 for masculine. And a lady dress, they can have varying levels from 1 to 10 with a dress. And with just like a suit over, you can also have varying levels from 1 to 10. Depending on the design of different things you do to them. That can make something that seemed very masculine, you can make it more feminine with certain things added to it. Which is very fascinating. But the aspects of a play, like, the clothing someone wears can tell you their location, their period, their genre... Like, if you're doing a comedy or this or that, the time of the day, you wouldn't wear, like, certain clothing at daytime. You wouldn't wear certain clothing at nighttime. The seasons, the activity, concepts of things are going on. Very interesting. And then there's the elements of design, which is, is it really formal, whimsical, rigid, like the texture of the clothing? Like, just the lining of the clothing, the shape of the clothes, how big the clothing is, and just the colors, what the colors can tell you about the character. It's very interesting. Like, if you saw a lady in a in this really big dress with a big hat, but the dress was in stripes of black and yellow. She's like a queen bee kind of lady. She's, she knows her. She knows what she's about. It's a very, very confident looking lady. That's, that's the argument for a, like dressing like that. Or if you had someone in more of like an apron, like just like an apron setup thing, you know, they're more of a humble beginning kind of person. Maybe they're a maid, maybe they're a baker or something. Clothing informs you of a lot of things. And the actor wearing the clothing, that does a lot as well because Wearing the clothing, it makes you kind of be these things. One, uh, one girl, uh, Tristan, wore like a more flowery kind of dress and everything. They put like a, a head thing on her with jewels and everything. And so they're like, yeah, she's an elven queen. It was like, and she was being very regal and everything. Another chick, she was wearing like this very tight uh, kind of dress going on. But it was like, it was like checkered, black and white checkered, but with pink frill across the middle. Uh, for where the zipper is, and she was like, she felt like a school marm, like like a very strict and serious school lady. It was very interesting, extremely interesting, uh, just how the costume is informed to people a little bit. Another guy was in a trench coat, and he was just being very sneaky with the trench coat. He also had like a that uh that newspaper cap, and so it's very interesting how costumes affect people, and it really does. Costumes do affect people, and it makes me think about that. It makes me think, should I be dressing? Specific ways for content. Like, um, I think costume could affect things a little bit. I should experiment with what I wear and see what that could do to me. I'm very interested in that. I should stop recording with no pants on. That's probably, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, maybe, maybe. But, um, so fun. This is really fun. Interesting fact I gotta mention. Uh, so she was showing us a bunch of stuff from Wicked. And Wicked make, uses so much uh, people for production and everything. They make suit. They ha they make special suits for every character. They have to make new ones for every time a, a person gets changed for with a different actor. They have to make a new wig every time. This is balls crazy. Wigs, and they have to have so many wigs because they have so many different hairstyles in the shows. Um, it takes fifteen to forty hours to make a wig. Like the first thing they do is they get they put like a a mold. They they get like plastic and they put it on someone's head. And they just cover all the hair and everything, and then they just tape it down with a bunch of tape, just a crap ton of tape. And then the dude or lady that like they'll, they'll make sure it's all done perfect. And then they'll do a bunch of measurements on the entire skull and everything. They'll write down where the hairline is and everything. And then they'll take that mold and then they'll put it on like a bust. And then uh, they will uh, fill like the 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 top of the bust with like some some sort of uh, mesh. 
so they can get like there's a head right here and then where the hair would be and then they got to put the wig on there and so then they just start putting the hairs into it and you have to put it in one hair at a time a wig takes 15 to 40 hours to make because you have to put in the hairs one hair at a time that is crazy that is that is that's nuts that's some dedication to work right there man this is damn damn think about those of you who have work think about how boring you think your job is think about how boring you think that job is now imagine someone who gets paid to make a wig one strand of hair at a time holy crap holy crap i don't i just, i can't even i can't i just i can't even that is amazing that is that is ridiculous um, there's other things about design and costumes and all that stuff, and very interesting. Oh yeah, they make, they have about 920 wigs for Wicked, so that's a lot of, a lot of wigs. That's a lot of wigs. Holy crap. But, um, yeah, that's it. That's it for this, uh, then whatever we've talked about in the vlog, don't know. But I, uh, I had fun talking. I enjoy these theater things. I'm, what can it do for the channel? What can it do for us? How can we get better, right? How can we get better? It's so interesting. But there you go. That is that is the vlog for now. I had fun talking. I'll be a fun listening. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and see you next time.